and it costed me ten years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm and 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 how did you? Oh, I came into it. Uh, I came into the study of twins right apart, uh, not by accident, not entirely by accident. Approximately three to four years ago, uh, I had been reading some twin literature, and I had gone back and re-reviewed the Newman, Freeman, and Holzinger book. And I, I just thought that was a, such a beautiful experimental design. I love simple designs that are cutting and definitive. Yes. And that design, the twin design with uh, twins root apart, struck me that way. And I talked to my colleague, Alka Telegan, about the possibility of doing a twins root apart study. And we chatted about it over coffee and over lunch a few times. And we simply could not solve the problem of how to find such twins. Mm -hmm. I had never seen a newspaper story about them or anything. And we thought, well, could you take out a big ad in the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times? And we looked into the cost of that, and it was just enormous. And so we put the idea aside. And about, uh, oh, a year or so later, uh, a newspaper story appeared in the local newspaper of a set of twins, Jim Lewis and Jim Springer. And I, uh, I heard about it from one of my graduate students in a seminar that evening, and I said, please get that into my mailbox tomorrow. Yes. When I got in early the next day, somebody had already put it in my mm. mailbox. See, mm. I had talked about twins and twin studies, yes. although I'd never conducted one. And there it was, and, uh, and all these striking similarities were noted in the story. Mm. Well, I had worked uh, on a university committee allocating research funds for many, many years, and I knew yes. the committee was set up to support research that needed immediate funding. Mm -hmm. I got on the phone, I called the dean, and I asked him for money immediately. Mm -hmm. And he gave it to me. And I got on the phone, and I called uh, the newspaper reporter who wrote the story. Mm -hmm. And within two days, I had Springer Lewis on the phone and persuaded to fly to Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I got into it. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they volunteered. They were delighted to come. In fact, they were a lot of fun to work with. They really were helpful. But in the process of searching for them, I talked to a woman who was a reporter for the Associated Press. And she was the one who knew had, who had written the story about them. And she said, oh, I'll tell you who wrote the story. Why don't you tell me why you're interested? Mm -hmm. And I had that all worked out because that's what I was going to tell Springer and Lewis. And so I told her the story of why identical twins reared apart are valuable. And it wasn't until later that I realized she was typing this down on a typewriter. Mm. And she said to me, well, how are you going to be able to afford to do this? And I said something along the lines, I'm going to beg, borrow, or steal <laughs> in order to do this. Yes. Well, I had given her a very good line. And uh, the article she wrote appeared in the New York Times the following Sunday. Yeah. Uh, even before I had contacted uh, and got uh, Springer and Lewis to agree to come. And that story elicited uh, more mm -hmm. twins, and our study, study started to move from that point. So now you have collected 20, 21? We've collected 21 sets of identical twins reared apart, and we have quite a few more contacts. We, if we're able, if we can raise the funds, uh, there's no question we'll be able to study over 50. Is it and 50? That'll be the largest material in the world? It'll be the largest single collection in the world. Mm. And I no longer uh, believe that that's the limit. Uh, we have leads on a very large number. A uh, hundred is not mm. impossible if we could get the funding. I must uh, say that I'm very impressed by this because I visited Shields in the beginning of the 60s. And we discussed the possibility of doing such a study, and we came to the conclusion that it was not likely that such a study could be done anymore, because uh, in most countries, people uh, tend to think that twins should not be separated, they should be brought up together. So we felt that it was about the end of, of, of that uh, phenomenon, uh, but I'm very surprised that yeah, you've been able to, to find within such a short time, yeah. 20 cases, so your prediction may be true that yeah. you could find 50 cases. Well, we cases have some uh, 
definite advantages. I think there's much more worldwide communication. Oh, yeah. uh, there's television now. Yes, television was not nearly as popular in those days, no, although no. Shields no. did use television. Oh, yes, he did. Yeah. He? I think it was the... Uh, Bronowski, Bronowski, uh, Bronowski program. Bron yes. yeah. It's interesting, I've uh, gone back and read parts of Newman, Freeman, and Holzinger, and of course they were recruited by radio. Radio yes. and newspaper. That was the uh, uh, Chicago Festival of some kind. Oh, uh, there was uh, a World's Fair in Chicago at the World's time Fair. also. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course that was an inducement for twins to come to Chicago. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, of course, one advantage your study had, and our study has over Newman Freeman and Holzinger, is they, uh, they were very careful in their recruitment. They didn't bring anyone to Chicago unless they were convinced mm. that they were identical twins, whereas yes. we're recruiting both identical and fraternal yes. twins, and so we're not excluding those identical twins who might be different. No, that, that's it's very important that you yeah. stress that. 